Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, yes, it's show number 172, 172 of the Irish Family History and Genealogy Show with curious news and notes from Ireland, uh, all from the Irish Roots Cafe and irishroots.com. Among today's topics, the family of the day is Hayes, the Irish County of the Month is County Clare, uh, searching for Kirkpatrick, Smith, and Walsh, curious news, O'Regan and Holmes, Hmm, there's a couple of folks we found, individuals that have been aging very well in those families, so if you're related, you'll want to hear. Uh, Number five, the video of the month, County Meath, where Halloween began. And number six, two Irishmen on chili stamps are honored. And number seven, Red is the Rose by Karen and a little interpretation of my own. And that's all coming up in today's show. Hey, hello. Remember to listen to all seven of our podcast feeds. We've got them on history and genealogy and Irish language and song and... Uh, uh, at least at least half of them are all for free, so take a listen. They're all at irishroost.com, and they're also available on iTunes. And uh, let's take a listen here now for the notes this week from Mike. That's me. What's happening today at the Irish Roots Cafe? Well, let's see. This Saturday is the Music Masters Workshop at the Irish Museum in uh, Kansas City at the Union Station, so come on down if you want to learn an instrument or a song or a boron, or a, a, a tin whistle, uh, or a, gosh, oh, fiddle too. They're, they've got instructors for near everything, so come on down. I'll be there. Uh, that's at the Irish Museum in Kansas City at Union Station. Number two, the National Archives here continues to have programs to help family researchers and genealogists, and they have a great, great group of volunteers to help any time you might drop in. And they're in the building right next to Union Station in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. They're they're really a national resource, and uh, you need to check them out if you're on the hunt. And number three, oh, good old Kenny's Bookstore. It's just a reminder, they've been around for a long time. I was there before they got on the web. Now they're real active on the web, and they're at kenny's.ie. And uh, just wanted to pass that along. I think they said they had, what, 5 million vo- books available? Something like that. So, hey, how can you go wrong? But now we've got coming up the one-minute podcast from the Irish Song Podcast with Karen singing her song and me later. And would like to send this out to all the good folks at the Irish Roots Cafe. I enjoyed listening so much to Make the Bridge and... Um, this goes out to Katie and Sweeney and all the good folk there and certainly to all of you. I hope that you enjoy it. And red is the rose that in yonder garden grows And fair is the lily of the valley Clear is the water that flows from the boin My love is fairer than any was down by Killarney's green wood that we strayed, and the moon and the stars they were shining. The moon shone its rays on his locks of golden hair, and he swore he'd be mine forever. 
Over the mountain and down into the glen To the little Irish cot in the valley Where the thrush and the linnet sing their ditty and their song And my love leaning over the half door It's not for the parting with my sister Kit it's not for the loss of my mother. It's all for the loss of my bonny Irish lass. I'm leaving my homeland forever. Well, folks, that's it. That I had to add that little. I listened to Karen play that song on the podcast, and I had I kept singing it and singing it. So I had to throw in a little bit of. Of, of how I learned it, and that, of course, is a little bit more like Joe Heaney with the lyrics. And uh, if you want to hear the whole thing, the way Karen sings it, which is really nice, you got to listen to the Irish Song Podcast. We're on iTunes, and it's also on our homepage, and you can find it just by click, clicking on the old Irish Song Podcast links. And now it's time for the Book of the Month. Oh, we've got several books of the month here. Uh, we're going to list them out here for you. Number one is The Families of County Clare, Ireland. That's the hardbound uh, book that I wrote on The Families of County Clare way back when. One of the early hardbound volumes to the set on the uh, uh, the Irish Families Project, and it has pictures and dates. It also has a 1659 census and a few other things. I've got a link on the blog for details. Uh, but we've we've covered lists of families in Clare in that book, and it includes things like the, the census and the 1890 birth index. And we also talk a little bit about the Viking area uh, and the era that they, uh, when they, when they came into Ireland, and there were Viking raids from Scandinavia. And uh, that included landings at Galway Bay up there on the north of Clare and up the Shannon River into Limerick. There was a lot of battles there. Uh, hey, old Brian Baru had to battle those Vikings there several times. And, uh, you know, the County Clare itself, it used to be part of Thoman, which was a larger geographical division. But in 1565, they formed it into County Clare, as we know it today. And uh, it would hold most of the territory that used to be called Thoman, but not all of it. And in early times, that territory of Thoman was larger than Clare, of course, containing a lot of County Limerick and County Tipperary uh, run into the borders of Kilkenny and Queens County. Now, the exact boundaries in those days were a little bit flexible, and they ro rose and fell with the fortunes of uh, the different families of Thoman. And, of course, Clare there, you know, is on the border of uh, the Atlantic Ocean on the west and Loch Derg and the Shannon River on the east and south. And that separates it. It's a lot. It's some natural barriers and... Uh, that also made it a reason it was a, a, not one of the first places to be overcome by those invaders, you know. Uh, Clare remained independent for a long time, and it gives County Clare a flavor of it, its own, don't you know? And you're going to find that the links between families of Clare and those in, in uh, Limerick and Tipperary are closer than, than average because of the close geography of the counties that they shared and also the common uh, unity in the past under the kingdom of Thoman. And in the 17th century, we find Irish from all over Ireland were invited into Clare. I think it was to hell or cannot. In other words, you're going to die or you're going to run yourself into Clare. So uh, a lot of people went into Clare. A lot of people also left after they were forced into it. You know, they just sort of left and then waited for the uh, policemen to leave. And they just went back into their counties or tried to. Uh, there's a lot of stories there, but that's all I can tell today. And we've got uh, some links to more uh, books on County Clare, including the one I wrote, the uh, Spiral Bound book, and uh, the Histories by Frost and, Cla and uh, 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 White. So uh, take a look at the blog. I, I mentioned those there. And you know what? Coming up, we've got the secret of 400 millionaires in Ireland. I wonder what they did to earn their fortune. But now it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. 
Terence Lyons of Atkinvale, Queensland, Australia, Your Irish Book of Arms has shipped. Sharon Diane Zimmerman, Your Irish Family's Book has shipped. And uh, welcome as a new member searching for Kirkpatrick and Smith. Uh, Jason McGraw of Chicago, Illinois, Your County Tyrone Genealogy Book has shipped. Uh, William Lurch of Chico, California, welcome as a new member. Uh, looking for Catherine Walsh, born about 1853. And we believe that they're from County Clare and came to the U.S. around 1877. Number five, Kim Clancy of Temecula, California. Your families of Cary has shipped. Number six, Paul Rogers of Mountain View, California. Your many books on Irish genealogy have shipped. I think that makes you the uh, patron of the day, don't you know? And number seven, Maureen Miller of Stafford, Virginia. Your Meath and Westmeath genealogy books have shipped. Boy, what a mouthful. That's the seven for today. And hey, that reminds me, I got to say this every week. Thanks to each and every member and each and every patron that gets a book because without you, there'd be no podcast. There'd be no books. It took you to help me write them all, really, your support. And uh, you're acting as a sponsor, whether you know it or not, and you're welcome and needed. Now it's time for the Irish Family Name of the Day. Oh, well, the Irish family name of the day is Hayes, and it's in honor of member Brendan Hayes of Fort Worth, Texas, searching in County Clare. Now, related spellings of the name include Hayes, H-A-Y-S, or H-A-Y-E-S, H-A-Z-E, also sounds like Hayes, and that works, O-He, O-Hey, O-Hoy, and Hoy even can be uh, forms of the same name, depending on who is writing it and who is pronouncing it. And O'Hugh and He's are also confused with this name, so keep your eyes open. Variant spelling groups number 848, 1669, and 2396 from the Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. I've got a link to that book with details on the blog. Now, the history of the name. As you may have guessed from all, listing all those names, there are several unrelated families of the name found in Ireland. And the older Irish of the name of O'He, O-H-E-A, with an apostrophe in there, which is the old Fada, uh, has often been changed to Hayes. And Wolf, Reverend Patrick Wolf, he said that uh, over 10 families who changed from the older O'Hoda or O'He to O'He and O'Hayes, uh, O'He itself remained as the main spelling in County Cork. That's H-E-A. Uh, but Hayes is also most often found in that county in the 1890 index, so there might have been some late interchanging of that name spelling. Now, Jeffrey Keating in his book finds that the O'Hees were uh, chiefs of Pobel O'Hay or Pobel O'He in the barony of Carberry in County Cork, and further he found that O'He or O'Hayes was found as a chief uh, in Musgrave Lacra or Laura. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, really, uh, which lay uh, between Kilmalock and Ardpatrick in the barony of Kosh Lee in County Limerick. And uh, that's the end of the partial extract from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. Hey, and by the way, on the blog, I spell all these words out so you can read it yourself and uh, maybe get some clarification. In the 17th century, both he and O'He were principal names in Clare and found in Cork, Limerick, Kerry, uh, Tipperary and Waterford. So, you know, there's a lot of them out there. And uh, that was a partial extract taken from the Book of Irish Families as well. Uh, so, oh, you can find a link to that book. That's where we take most of the family name history there. It's from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small by Michael O'Loughlin. That's me. And uh, link on the blog with more details. Uh, now, we took a look at the Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms, and a brief search of that work shows that O'He, or O'He, is given in the Irish Book of Arms, and on the shield appears a sword with a serpent entwined upon it. So if you've been looking at that coat of arms and been wondering, could that be connected to my family? Well, if your name is O'He, or O'Hayes, maybe it is. You've got to do some research to find out if it's tied to your family members at all. Uh... We've got coming up here a little search of the family index here, the sources. Oh, 
Oh, coming up later this episode, we're going to talk about the surprising popularity of Halloween this year and a link to the uh, story all about that and uh, why this year it exceeds expe expectations and what the big seller is this year. But now it's on to the free master online index at irishroots.com. We show listing for the name Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S, 78 times. That's 78 times it's found in my books. And here's a few examples. Uh, o. Hayes in the County Meath and Westmeath Genealogy Notes book. D. Hayes in the Irish Names and Surnames by Wolf. Uh, Hayes in the Families of County Clare, Ireland. Uh, R. Hayes in County Kildare uh, Genealogy and Family History Notes. Uh, D. Hayes in and Hayes Park in Irish Families on the California Trail. And here we have uh, A. Hayes in a Special Census of Ireland Pinner's Survey. And number seven, we have a R. Hayes in Missouri Irish, the original history book of the Irish in Missouri. Now, when I said those are all uh, uh, abbreviations, like R, when I say R. Hayes, that's like it might have been Robert Hayes, but we just had the first letter in, in the index, so I called it R. You can search for your name in that index, too. Just go to irishroots.com. Now it's time for... Around the world in Irish ways, it's the web page and videos of the month. Let's see what I bros around here and found. Uh, the Hayes of Dublin, webisode number eight, Park Lawn, Lawn Cemetery. Hmm, and that's also in Toronto. It's a video on YouTube. Just click uh, on the link on the blog. Number two, Blue Shark Fishing in Ireland. That's a video too. And uh, you can watch him reel this shark in from beginning and pull it on up. And it's a fairly good sized shark. So see how it's really done over there. Maybe you'll want to go in and try some blue shark fishing yourself. Number three, the Spirits of Meath Halloween Festival. Oh, it's where Halloween began, they say. And we've got a, a nice little... Uh, YouTube selection to watch. Click on the blog. Number four, Doolin County Clare, Ireland. And it's set to Irish pipes and it's Oceanside. And of course, that's also where the O'Loughlins were, you know, O'Loughlin country, I think. Uh, but that's a nice little, pretty little video too. You can listen to it, click on the blog, or just type in those words I said, and it will probably bring it up for you on YouTube if you use it. And remember to check out all of our video shorts. Uh, We've got about 20 of them I did, or 16 of them I did a year or two ago. And, and as soon as I get done with this season of the Song Festival, I'm moving on to the videos, and we'll do 20 more of them, I think. And we'll see. And so, hey, if you have any ideas about what videos you want me to make to answer or to talk about, just let me know. I'll try to put it in there. You know, we have a uh, tremendous budget here. I can just squeeze anything in sitting in front of my commu computer and turning that camera on. So, hey, let's try it, and let me know if you want to hear something. You hear that music? You know what that means? It's time for Curious News and Notes from Ireland Today. And uh, here we go right about now. Number one, we've got links to the blog on all these here, but uh, pumpkins are on the rise. You got one store that sold, or one chain that sold 52,000 of them, setting a record, I think. And hey, they say fireworks are popular too. And now that's not so in the U.S. Maybe it's because we use Fourth of July for our fireworks, uh, but it's really a story. Halloween just keeps growing over there. Uh, link on the blog out of the independent.ie. Number two, Chile has honored two patriots that originally came from Ireland. Number one, Bernardo O'Higgins. I think I got a picture of him in the uh, Missouri Irish book. He, his father was of County Sligo heritage and is known in the, uh, as the country's founding father. And Juan McKenna, uh, or uh, John McKenna, was born in Monaghan and served as Commandant General of the Chilean Army. And they're viewed as being very important. And they came out with uh, stamps for those two guys, the 86-cent stamps for both of them, both of them in full color. And they're both dressed in full military uh, regalia. And uh, both had to obtain an education in Spain because... It really wasn't available to them in Ireland, and that leads to the Chile connection in case you're wondering how they got there. And uh, no play on words with Chile, you know. Uh, it's it's the country, South America, right down there. Right down there in South... Oh, it's, and they're a good people, too. Uh, number three, 
100-year-old Mr. Archie Holmes gives a recipe for long life, giving three things. Number one, a fair bit of chocolate to be consumed. Number two, gardening is the, the hobby you should take up. And number three, singing. And they say, once old Mr. Archie Holmes starts, he cannot stop. Uh, they, he just loves it. So he came from County Leash or County Lausch in 1957, settling in Wellington, New Zealand. And now he's still doing well. 100 years old. Uh, there's some hope for all you other homes out there. Number four, a recent Dublin web video conference, uh, no, regular conference, drew some of the biggest names in tech. The founders of YouTube, Twitter, and Skype were in attendance. Hey, how about Apple? Where are those guys? Uh, link on the blog in the Irish world, a good story. Number five, K. O'Regan, age 74, also completed her 100th marathon in four hours and 25 minutes. I'd probably still be crawling at that rate. Uh, article in the Irish world, but there's an O'Regan. If you've got Reagan blood, you want to make sure you're related to her, huh? Number six, at least 40 kinds of shark swim off Ireland's shores. And I wonder if those sharks gave the Vikings any trouble when they were invading Ireland. I don't know. Uh, that I wonder if they had any stories about that. That's in the Irish Times. And some of those sharks aren't what you might think of as sharks. That's sort of a, uh, a medical term or a research term, but... At least 40 kinds of them. Number seven, the 400th person is to become a millionaire in Ireland. Uh, and that's as a result of the National Lottery. And over 16 million euro. And the winnings are tax-free. Bought the ticket in Belenisloe, County Galway. Boy, the next time I'm in Belenisloe, I think I'll buy another ticket. Never did work for me. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>